If the Word of God's in you, there's going to be power working in you. If the Word of God's in you, it's going to come out of your mouth, praise God. And therefore, your body has to line up with the Word of God. kingdom of God principles right now. And the only work is when, Josh, your confession rules you, brother. Yep. Yep. You talk negative when you wake up every morning, and I guarantee you it takes you longer to get out of bed than what it would if you woke up and said, thank you, Lord. I thank you for this day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And your body saying, won't you lay here just a little longer? Oh, lay here just a little bit longer. and you feel better. No, if you get up and move around, then you're acting by faith, and you spoke faith, and then you got to respond to what's inside you. There's a, there's a girl walking up there. She kind of set me back four or five steps, and, and I'm glad she did. But she was jogging, and she passed me. He, she left me twice while I was walking one. And she said, come on, let's do it. Go on walk. I said, I can't do that. She said, can't never did do nothing. <laughs> yeah. I doubt if she was a Christian, but... She said, can't never, that's, that's just a principle of God. If you say can't all the time, you ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Well, I picked up the pace a little bit, and she still passed me again. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to take that. I'm trying to do this. She said, well, you get it. I said, yeah, I'll get it. There you go. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just a tickle of being in church this morning. I don't know what to say. <laughs> and he said but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this man go and he goeth and to another he come, he, uh, come and he come and to my servant you do this and he doeth it so what was the man saying he said I know something about speaking the word if I demand, the Bible says in, in John 14, 13, you don't have to go there. It says, if you demand or ask anything in Jesus' name, it shall be done. You've got to demand your knees. You've got to demand your, your back. You've got to demand. Put a demand on your body because that's, if that's in you, your body is going to respond to what's in you. That's the kingdom of God. He said, oh, don't look over there, don't look over here, but it's within you, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Remember what Ephesians 3 says, 26, it says, it says that, uh, let's see, put that up there, I know what it says, Ephesians 3, 26, is that about the 26 verses, mm -hmm. let's see, 320, now, 320, I guess, now unto you, Unto him that is able to do the exceedingly abundant, and to him to do the exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. If the word of God's in you, there's going to be power working in you. If the word of God's in you, it's going to come out of your mouth, praise God. And therefore, your body has to line up with the word of God. You're never going to rise above what you say. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Well, I'll go feed my horses tomorrow. Probably tomorrow and you'll say the same thing again and never get fed to start with. <laughs> I'm going to go get my truck worked on tomorrow. It's not real bad. But whatever you say comes out of your mouth. That's what you're going to have. And you've heard this before. So let's go back to that Matthew. Matthew 5. Matthew 8 verse 5. My, let's see verse. 
Let's look on down there where we was at. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled. You know, you want to do signs and wonders and miracles and see them? Speak the word. He marveled at the man's faith. He marveled at what the man said. That man, look what he says. He said, <laughs> I have found not so great a faith, no, not in Israel. I ain't found that kind of faith nowhere. That's better than getting hands laid on you. That's better than having anointing, anointing with oil. It's for you to speak the word of God and get it in your spirit because it renews your mind. Mm -hmm. And if there's ever a day that we're living in right now, our minds must be renewed. I challenge you. Every time you, if you ever watch the news, I don't watch much anymore, but every now and then I'll see Biden's face. And I've, I've, I've made a decision, I ain't gonna say nothing. Because I can't say nothing good. <laughs> so I'm just not gonna say nothing. But I do pray for that fellow, that, that, uh, our president and the vice president every day. I pray for them. That the Bible says if you pray for those who have rule and authority over you, you try to live peaceably with all men. I'm not to you more. It don't bother me. It bothers me if I don't pray for them. Amen? Amen? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I found a not so great faith. No, not in Israel. So what's great faith? What is great faith? Speaking the word of God. The word only. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into, into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as you have believed, so be it unto you. What do you say there? Once you speak the word of God, Jesus says, just go on about your business because as you believe, it's going to happen for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. <clears throat> and his servant was healed in that self-same hour. You said, now, Pastor, I've spoke the word and it took longer than an hour. Or you stay with the word like the woman with the issue of blood done. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made whole. And the literal Greek language right there says she kept on saying. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, well, if you just if you say it more than once, it's not faith. I beg your pardon because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God only. Yeah. The more I say it, the more faith I'm going to get. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at Romans 8, right? Is this good so far? Yes. yes. Amen. You're taking it all in, ain't you? She ain't took her eyes off me. Because <laughs> I'm uh, E.T. Or... <laughs> Romans 8. Let's go back to verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, you shall die. Now what does the flesh, what does this world have to offer? <coughs> The fleshly world, the carnal world, nothing. It says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the spirit and do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen? For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are also sons and daughters of God. Now, when you can see yourself not a servant no more and a son... Well, then the very next word, the uh, next verse says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I love that. Once you get born again, once you have it, uh, made the word of God uh, first thing in your life, you are not, you will not go back to the spirit of bondage of fear. Amen. Because the word of God's going to come out. I sit in my chair and when I make my confession of faith and I read my Bible. I pray in, uh, in, in tongues and I, uh, uh, and I come to a scripture, James 4, 7. And I stop, 
I said, now Satan, you know that, you can read that, but it says that if we resist you, you have to flee from us. And I speak the word of God every day, Satan. Listen to me. Sometimes I act like he looked. I said, I said, you listen to me. <laughs> this is all in the spirit, man. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've seen people say, say uh, I'm going to kick Satan out of the house, you know. Well, all you got to do is, is speak the name of Jesus. And he gone. He says, uh, we're not in receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Did you know fear brings bondage into your life? It brought bondage all over this world the last three years. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. The Bible says in Ephesians that we are engrafted into Jesus. Yeah. What does that mean? Jesus come to his own, but his own received not. And the apostle Paul took the words of the Gentiles, and we are adopted. Ha! Glory to God. Whereby we cry daddy. Here, whereby we cry daddy. That word Abba means daddy. Father. If you know God is daddy, you'll have a lot closer relationship with him. I know my daughters, when they said, Daddy, I really need something. I really said, okay. <laughs> but if they come real religious to us and the Father, I'd say, depart from me, I never knew. <laughs> 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 Did y'all hear this little thing? I don't know where Barbara told me about it. It says there was this young boy. He was in college. And uh, oh, he was turned 16. And he got his driver's license. And he said, uh, went to his dad. He said, Daddy, to Bob. He said, uh, how about me driving the car this weekend? Your daddy said, well, when you bring your grades up from a C to a B and you do good and come and go to church for a while and prove yourself, we'll see. Well he done all them things. He said, Daddy, I brought my I brought my I brought my grades up to a B and, and I'm in church every Sunday now. His daddy looked at him and said, but you never cut your hair. You still got that long hair. And he said, now, Daddy, I read the Bible and I study. Moses had long hair. Samson had long hair. Jesus had long hair. That man looked at him and said, yeah, and everybody walked wherever they went to go. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Glory to God. <laughs> I don't think the boy ever said nothing back to him. To... <laughs> Praise God. The Spirit itself, our witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And look at this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. What does an heir mean? It means we have an inheritance in the Word of God. We're heirs. And look at this. And joint heirs with Christ. If it so be that we suffer with him or that we go with him that we may also be glorified with him now look it's like this <clears throat> it's like this you're me and you we're both Christians and the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ amen yep. so we're supposed to be getting the same thing God ain't got no picks you come into the kingdom of God the same way. You read the word of God and get it in your heart the same way. Come on now. You don't want to do the time, you know, that's all right. You just, you know, just get by the best you can, I guess. It's the word of God. But we're happy about this inheritance, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that in a physical inheritance, somebody's all time, a, a mean brother or a mean sister wants to contest the will. I shouldn't say it that way, should I? That's the truth. <laughs> well, that's the way the Satan does. We all got the same will, but he tries to make dis dis divisions in our heart and say, Dana, 
Pastor Max has got more than you have. And we start believing that. And we get mad and said, I'm going to contest the will now. Judge, now God, I'm contesting that will. And it doesn't work like that. We've all got the same inheritance. And we need to join together and just enjoy it and be happy. Be joyful. What was that song out sometime ago back now? Be happy. Uh, don't worry. Be happy. Huh? Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. I hated that song. Because <laughs> I didn't know what it meant then, but that meant, that meant what it means. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like the Pharisees. I like the religious people today, denominational people today. I try to read something else into that. It calls me not to like it. But that's what he said. That's what he means. So everybody say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. See, this is today we're talking about God in you <laughs> and you in God. Amen? Amen. So the word of God, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. The word of God in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Let's look at 1 Peter 2, 9 now. Look at this. Let's go back to verse 8. That's a good one too. I, I don't want to miss that. Let's go back to verse 7. I'll look back. <laughs> unto you, therefore, which believe he is a precious, but unto them that be disobedient, the stone which is a which the builders disallowed. See what churches has done today? Jesus is supposed to be the head, the cornerstone. I don't know how to lay a block, but I've heard these block bears say, if you don't get the cornerstone, the, it's just right, everything else is going to be out square. Is that not right, Woodrow? So look what the church has done with the cornerstone, Jesus. They disallowed it. And it's made, a, it's made them, it said, and it's made Jesus be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. I want to announce to you right now, I'm not a, a Pentecostal preacher. I'm not a word of faith preacher. I'm not a Baptist preacher. I'm not a Methodist preacher. I'm not a Nazarene preacher. I'm a preacher of the word of God. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I am. <coughs> I'm preaching to a girl a while ago, that girl sitting there in the counter. And she kept listening, looking, and she said, you know, you're the first preacher that I've ever heard to say that you wasn't a denominational preacher. I said, that's the reason I'm at where I'm at right now. No place to go, no place to <laughs> preach, no church to be built. Everybody hates me. <laughs> Because I'm not a denominational man. I'm a word, I'm a Bible man. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus, I read all the, he was born in a small town, a, a town that wasn't very known good. He went around preaching to the poor. He went around preaching to small groups. And I don't I don't have to get mad because I got a small group. I love it. More people you got, more problems you got. <laughs> Pastors will try to tell you that, oh, that ain't the case. I mean, I'm good with problems, and they're full of them probably right anyway when they say that. In their own heart. I'm not going to get on that. Let me get back to it. <laughs> but you are a what? Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should what? Show, forth, Show the forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Which in times past you were not the people of God, but you are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, had a head not obtained, but now you have obtained mercy. Isn't it good to wake up and call your father daddy? Hey daddy. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I don't need a thing today. I just want to tell you I love you. You know what I mean? 
We all the time tell God what we need and what we want. But how many times do we just look up and worship about a half an hour and show forth the praises of our hearts? And say, Lord, I really don't need nothing today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. With you, there's no, there's no loss. There's no nothing but good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are a peculiar people, a chosen of God. We are God's own people, Josh. God's own people. So many people try to please God out of the flesh. There's nothing your flesh can do. You can't make up yourself pretty much to please God. You can't dress yourself and put a tie on or anything that and, and try to please God. You are what you are, but your spirit is what's born again. Your flesh is not. It never will be. And we better start thinking about that and not trying to look holy with the shirt buttoned up to the neck, wear a long sleep, hot as it is in the summer. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. God's God and He's Daddy. And He's my Daddy. He's your Daddy. Hallelujah. That's right. Heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4 12 says, The Word of God is alive, quick, and sharp. Than any two edged sword. Amen? Amen. Now let's look at something here. Let's go to Revelation 19. This is one of the ones I didn't know we was going to get to or not. At the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've all been raptured out, church. Rapture's done come, and we all over. We've been celebrating at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the wedding reception. We've been there for seven years, while people down here have been going through tough times. But now, this is talking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And John says, I saw heaven. You see? Yeah. Uh, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. <laughs> and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. Now look at this. The word of God will make war with people. Because they do not understand it. They do not want it. They want to fit in with the clique. God clicked me out of the clique a long time ago. And I've never been clicked back either. <laughs> Hope to God. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And his name was written. That no man knew but himself. He was clothed. With the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called. <laughs> What's Jesus' name? The Word of God. See, that's how important the Word of God is, because it's Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now look at this. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. What does Ephesians call it? The two-edged sword, the part of the armor of God. To what? That he should smite the nations. Now this is after the rapture. This is when he comes back. You're going to get rid of them all. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron, the sword of the spirit, coming out of his mouth. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh name written, Hallelujah, King of kings and Lord of lords. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that, that he's coming, that, that his name on his leg, they got it written, his name written on his leg, the word of God. Now why is it so important that we speak the word of God? Because it's speaking Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'll go about five more minutes. Go to Romans 10, 9, 10. Do you remember what uh, Proverbs 6, 2 says? It says, we are snared, taken captive by the words of your mouth. Talk sickness all summer, you'll be sick all winter. <laughs> Come on. Charles Capps said, 
that one, when a person gets, as they get reached 64, the more negative they talk about getting old, the more they talk about their lumbago, the more they talk about their arthritis, the more they talk about negative words, he says they usually don't live but four years after they turn 64. Now why am I preaching the word of God? Because it's a matter of life and death. Huh? Glory to God. And you remember what Proverbs 18, 20, 22 says? Death and life is in what? Why do you want to speak death all the time and talk about cancer? That's what you're doing. Cancer causes death. Huh? Folks, listen. We've got to wake up. We're living in the last days. And, you know, I found a scripture, praise God, it says we, feel, we will fulfill the number of our days in this, in this life in health. Amen. Exodus 23, 25, 26. And it says that there'll be none barren. There'll be no women in your family, be no in your lineage, will not be barren. I remember quoting that scripture over here. I'm what you have. Oh, yeah. It was, it was with this, and I believe. That one? Hey. You're so pretty. <laughs> well, I believe that too. <laughs> I don't know where I was at. You. <laughs> yeah, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Now listen to me real close, because this will go straight over your head. And we'll close with this scripture. Verse 8 says, What saith he? What saith he? The word is nigh thee, even in thy. Come on, somebody get with me. Even in thy, verse 8, even in thy mouth. Thank you. And in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. Where is the word of God? It's in your mouth before it gets in your heart. That's why the word of God in you, brother God, is made flesh to your body. Ooh, Lord, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, now watch this, the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now what do you mean? For, if, for with the heart man believes and derives, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Now listen, show me the word forgiveness of sins in that scripture. It's not in there. But we've all used it to get people born again. But actually, it's talking about confessing Jesus, not your sins. Oh, get a hold of this. I'm about ready to leap over the table. I think I could. Go around and read the now, right? <laughs> So where does it say your sins? Confess your sins. Nowhere. It says that God, if you believe, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. This is all about today. It's all about confessing Jesus Christ. The word of the living God. Confessing that word. And this is a good place to, to, to start with it. For with the heart man believes in the run, and with the mouth is confession and made his salvation. Still no, no, no mention of forgiveness of sin. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed, for there is no <coughs> difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It did not say saved and have eternal life. Paul was sent to the Gentiles in the grace ministry. So he said, if you confess Jesus Christ, you want to be saved. Satan what? Everything that's evil on you. Everything that's bad in your life. 
You see, they just, I know this went over here because it went over mine. I said, Lord, I can't preach that way now. I'm not being taught that. Mm. <laughs> but I'm preaching it that way because it's the truth. That has no, that has not no place. There's no place in there that it says confessing your sins. And we've made it into a religious form that if you believe on Jesus Christ, believe you died, uh, believe you rose again the third day, uh, and all this, that you shall be saved. Well, the word saved there, listen. I look the word saved there. <clears throat> the word saved and the word salvation there is a word, it's called... Uh, Soterra. S-O-T-E-R-I-A. Soterra. And that word means salvation, deliverance, preservation, health, and a sound mind. Nothing to do with confessing your sins are in that scripture. There are, for, there are scriptures in there talking about John 3, 6. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that's a good place to start with somebody getting somebody saved. But this is a good place to get it in your heart that you are to confess Jesus Christ. You said, if you believe in your heart, save your mouth and confess Jesus, you shall be saved. From what? Saved from what? Bondage? You'll be saved from sickness? Be saved from uh, losing your mind? <coughs> Now in the Old Testament, I looked that word up too, salvation. It means Yeshua. Yeshua. That means deliverance. It brings aid, victory, prosperity, nothing broken and nothing missing. Amen. It's not got anything to do with that. Getting people saved right there. But that's good. We can do it. I guess they can, they've done it. I'm not, I'm not debating that. I'm not coming at that. But literally, if you look at that word, man, the word of God says what it says. And it means what it says. And praise God. Hallelujah. I believe it. How do you know you healed, Max? Word of God says I am. That's right. How do you know that you delivered? The Word of God says I am. Amen. How do you know that you have peace? The Word of God says I have Amen. peace. John 14, 27. How do you know that it's going to need to be supplied? Philippians 4, 19. The Word of God says it. He supplies my needs. What did you say? According to His riches and glory. According to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I know. I don't have to have opinion. I don't have to have a man's theology. I'm not a theologian. I'm a preacher of the word. I'm the preacher of righteousness. And that's not meaning you got to wear something to be righteous. That means just knowing that Jesus loved us so much, came and died on an old rugged cross. And he made us to be righteous through his shed blood. Woo! Glory to God. Well, excuse me for being excited, but it's been four weeks since I've been in church. <laughs> for whosoever shall call upon the word of God, we can read like that, on the word of God shall be saved. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to quit there. The word of God good? Yes. I sure something. You sure can. Uh, there are some good things on TikTok. And I sent it oh, okay. to my I sent it to my girls the other day and they can attest to this. There was a lady on there and she was talking about um, when in the old testament when they wrote the name of God, they wrote it Y H W H, no vowels. <clears throat> we what? later put vowels in it so we could say Yahweh. But Y H W H, when you make those sounds, you were talking about every breath for praise God. When you make those sounds, you're breathing in and you're breathing out. Even unsaved people are praising God's name with every breath they take. Amen. If you, I'd let you, if you'd have saved that, I'd let you preach that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> instead of TikTok. <laughs> But that is good. It's it's Well you know there's there's a there's one word uh, hallelujah that means the same thing in every language. It's why it's not why it's what? Yeah. 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 Breathing in and out. Breathing in and yeah. out. You're praising his name. Yeah. Yeah. He brought a different perspective to, yeah. to, that, yes. to that scripture. And you know, even unsaved people are praising his name and don't even know it. And like newborn babies. Like they die and the people taking their life breath when they die. That's amazing. Yes, it is. It's We're ever learning. I know. We're always learning. <laughs> That's good. Who wrote the, uh, who, uh, who put that Some on TikTok? Some little girl on TikTok. <laughs> 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 he, was talking, he was talking about Bible. Yeah, when you go. I'll send it to you. <laughs> she tells it much better than I. I'll send it to Josh. I don't think he does it either. You can put it on the church thing and anybody can know it. Okay, I'll put it on the church thing and anybody can know it. I mean, she tells it a lot better than I do. But I... Just this is from a man just Johnny Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you ha. <laughs> you ha. Ha. You. <laughs> you ha. Whoa. <laughs> 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 well, that's good. It's we thank you for watching today's program, and we invite you to join us on Sundays at 12.30 p.m. at the Knock County Sports Flex Conference Room. Also, feel free to subscribe to our channel, and make sure you click the bell icon for notifications on new episodes showing up on our channel each week. Again, we thank you for watching. May God bless you, and have a great week.